Hey TRT group, it's Justin again, and this is the third installment of my Hashimoto's series. So the previous two series, or previous two episodes, I talked about some of these symptoms that you can expect or possibly experience if you're a patient with Hashimoto's. Today, I'm talking about some of the laboratory considerations, some of the laboratory findings or changes that may be expected in a patient with Hashimoto's. Now, I'm not going to talk about TPO antibodies, thyroglobin antibodies, TSH receptor antibody. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about some of the findings you might expect or not expect in a patient with Hashis. So let's get it started. The first laboratory area that can be affected would be the renal findings on a patient's blood work. Uh, roughly about 20 to 30 percent of pa patients with uh, th hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's uh, may experience reversible changes in their GFR and their serum creatinine values. So, and these changes are due to changes in hemodynamics, in other words, blood flow. So there's, you can anticipate that a patient may experience a decrease in their GFR. Now, that decrease in their GFR happens because the GFR is calculated off the creatinine value. In patients with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, their serum creatinine values can go up. So you would think if the serum creatinine values are up, the GFR is um, a little bit altered, disrupted due to the calculation of the creatinine, then you'd think maybe you should get a size stat and C, right? Well, unfortunately, the cystatin C tends to go in the opposite direction as that of the creatinine value in patients with hypothyroidism. So with that being said, the cystatin C would be trending downward, and therefore the cystatin C value would be considered inaccurate. So in a patient with hypothyroidism, yes, their serum renal values could be altered, but those, those alterations are reversible upon hormone replacement. Also, due to uh, altered renal function, one can anticipate that there's going to be alterations in your metabolic and also your electrolyte functions as well. And this can be evidenced on the complete metabolic panel. In this case, I want to talk about hyponatremia. Hyponatremia means lower sodium values. So in other words, your salt levels on your CMP will be considered low. This doesn't happen to all patients with hypothyroidism, but it is a possible uh, expected finding. And hyponatremia occurs due to decreased clearance of water. So what happens is, since you're not getting rid of as much fluid, you're going to experience dilutional hyponatremia, meaning there's more water retention, and thus it dilutes down the sodium value, and thus it makes it look lower. Um, this water retention is also another reason why a lot of patients with hyponate, well, not with hyponatremia, but hypothyroidism also experience edema. Lipid abnormalities are also a somewhat common expected finding in patients with Hashimoto's and or hypothyroidism. Yes, hypothyroidism can increase your cholesterol. So it can increase your LDL and it increase your triglycerides. So it does this because hypothyroidism down regulates LDLRs or LDL receptors and LDLRs, their job is to dispose of LDLs. And it can also increase your triglycerides by downregulating the activity of something called LPL or lipoprotein lipase, which is an enzyme that's responsible for breaking down triglycerides. So there's a, an organization called the National Cholesterol Education Program or the NCEP. And as a matter of fact, it, they have a recommended guideline that any patient with an LDL above 160 should actually have their thyroid labs pulled as optimizing your thyroid can help optimize your lipids. So a question I get a lot is, can hypothyroidism increase your blood pressure? And the simple answer is yes. So hypertension or high blood pressure isn't a lab finding per se, but it is a clinical finding and one that's important to know or recognize in patients with Hashimoto's. So if a patient's blood pressure does increase due to hypothyroidism, a lot of the literature shows that if they don't already have hypertension, maximally you could ex expect maybe 150 over 100, maximally. Now, 
if they already have hypertension and hypothyroidism, that can have an additive effect, and thus the 150 over 100 rule really come, does not come into play at that point. But again, just like the previous areas, if you do have hypothyroidism and you optimize your thyroid and treat it appropriately, it is reversible, and thus the blood pressure will return to normal. So how does uh, hypothyroidism increase hypertension or cause hypertension? Um, from a pathophysiological standpoint, hypothyroidism reduces cardiac output. So from a compensatory mechanism standpoint, uh, your body is going to increase alpha adrenergic activity peripherally. So what that does is that increases peripheral vascular resistance via vasoconstriction. In other words, all the peripheral vessels constrict to keep the blood pressure up. Um, also, additionally, hypothyroidism, as I mentioned earlier, does lead to water retention, which additionally can increase more afterload on the heart and thus contribute more to hypertension as well. TRT and hormone optimization fam, uh, thanks for tuning in again, and we will see you next time.